This is our response to the challenge of competing in peaceful ways with the forces of communism. But however openly we face the challenge, we do not do so blindly. For we know that the background against which this competition must be waged and won is aflame with danger. A third of the world is communist. Another third is united with us in opposition to communist aggressive designs. And the remaining third, lands of Africa and Asia and Latin America, are stirring as a giant might stir from an ancient sleep, shaking off old forms, creating new governments, new nations. Along with the urge to independence which dominates these countries is the age-old desire to throw off the poverty which has bound them for so long. With friendly sympathy and with hope, we watch them struggle to birth as we ourselves once struggled. Sometimes, to our alarm, we see a new government's willingness to surrender its hard-won freedom to a totalitarian idea because of the mistaken belief that under communism, the 20th century colonialism, it can develop at a faster pace, ignoring the fact that the communists have achieved their degree of industrialization only at the high cost of personal liberty. And thus is the challenge presented squarely to us, of persuading people everywhere, in whatever peaceful ways we can, that only with liberty can men truly prosper. These are the obligations of leadership which the conditions of the world have forced upon us. And the stakes are high. Who are we who say we welcome and can win the contest which history poses for us now? What kind of a nation are we? Physically, there are several Americas. There is the America of the Plains, the kind of nation Jefferson envisioned of small towns and villages in which values endure from generation to generation. There is the America Jefferson could never have foreseen, of choked and towering cities. And there is the new America, the community of suburbs which have grown around the expanding cities. America is a land of exploding statistics. A clock in the Department of Commerce signals the birth approximately every seven and a half seconds of a new citizen into a country which has more than doubled in size in half a century. 